It has been a little over two months since my initial review of the Bamboo Lab P1P 3D printer. This printer has been living in the corner of my studio and has become my go-to machine for knocking out quick prototypes as well as batching out parts for all of the hardware organization I've been attempting to do. In my initial review, I said that I would love the option to swap out the stainless steel extruder gears for hardened steel so that I can print with abrasives and then I'd hope to cut out an enclosure so that way I could print ABS on the P1P. Well, this is my P1P today. The extruder has been upgraded to those hardened steel gears, the hot end has a hardened steel nozzle, and the entire printer is fully enclosed. This allows me to print with abrasives along with ABS, which it does beautifully. In today's video, we will go through the process of upgrading the tool head to the hardened steel extruder gears as well as the hot end, and we'll take a look at the Vision enclosure, which is a awesome community-made enclosure for the P1P. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot sent over their E7 Pro Plus standing desk to replace the wobbly desk that I've used for years. Although I try to watch my posture while editing, I find myself leaning forward and slouching often, which leads to a sore back. The E7 lets me quickly transition between sitting and standing within seconds. From the size to the material and color, as well as lots of optional add-ons, the E7 is completely customizable. The strong and durable carbon steel legs make the desk very stable, even fully extended, and the max capacity of 355 pounds should be plenty for any setup. I went with the 24 by 48 inch curved bamboo top and black frame to match the workbench in my studio. The included touchpad will let you manually adjust the desk up or down, and there are up to four savable presets. The E7 also has a massive 15 year warranty on all metal and mechanical parts. Links are available in the description below so you can find out more or pick up one of their great desks. Let's start off with the tool head upgrades, which are both official upgrades from Bamboo Lab and fairly easy to do. For this, we will upgrade the extruder gears to hardened steel and swap out the hot end for the hardened steel version. You don't have to do both of these at the same time, but to replace the gears for the extruder, you do need to remove the hot end, so it definitely makes the most sense. I've been really happy with the price for spare parts on the Bamboo Lab printers. The price of the entire hot end with the thermistor, the heater, the heatsink fan, as well as the hardened steel nozzle is $35, and the price for the hardened steel extruder gear upgrade is $20. Before you do anything, power off the printer and unplug the power cable. Then remove the magnetic front cover for the tool head. You can hang it over the X rods, but to avoid damage and get it out of the way, I recommend disconnecting the plug from the tool head board. All the plugs remove the exact same way, and I find it easiest to pinch it on both sides and sort of wiggle it out of its socket. With the front cover off, remove the two hot end connectors. One of the connectors is for the hot end cables and the other is for the heatsink fan. Next, remove the two screws that are holding the hot end in place. The replacement hot end does include two new screws, but I typically hold on to all hardware until I've got everything back and installed correctly. With the screws out of the way, you can grab the hot end and wiggle it back and forth while pulling down to remove it from the tool head. Moving on to the extruder, start by loosening the small screw on the filament cutting latch. When fully loose, the arm will swing down and out of the way. I typically just leave that small screw in the arm until it's time to reinstall it back in place. For the Bowden guide tube, press down on the black retaining clip with one hand and use your other hand to pull the tube out. Before we unscrew the extruder, disconnect its cable from the board the same way we did with the other cables. However, this one is a ribbon cable, so be extra careful that you don't damage that cable when you're removing its connector. There are a total of three screws holding the extruder in place that will all need to be removed. On the left, you have one on the top as well as the bottom, and on the right side, there is one midway down. Once those screws are removed, you can grab the extruder and pull it out of the tool head. With the extruder out, we need to open its housing to access the gears inside. Start by loosening the tension screw on the side. There are four screws on the side of the extruder body that will all need to be removed. With those screws out, it will take a little bit of effort to grab both sides of the extruder and pull the two halves apart, but you shouldn't need any tools. Replacing the gears is pretty straightforward. Pull out the larger gear and then remove the secondary gear on the tension arm, leaving the metal post that it pivots on in place. Then place the new arm back on the post, making sure that the spring is lined up on the arm and install the larger gear. At this point, all that you need to do is follow those steps in reverse to install the extruder back into the tool head as well as the new hot end. I do want to reiterate again to be careful when placing the extruder cable back into its spot. Also for the hot end, I find it easiest to push the wires into the small wire channel before you screw the hot end into place. Once you close the cover on the tool head, you are good to go and you can now print with abrasive filaments on your P1P. 
For the enclosure, there are a few options out there that I've seen, but this specific one is called Vision and is available over on printables.com. Huge shout out to my buddy, Josh Mura. He knew that I was looking into enclosing the P1P and shared this specific enclosure with me that he ended up installing on his printer. I really liked that this enclosure uses magnets to allow you to very easily access or remove the side panels, that it gives you full visibility on all sides of the printer. And for the very top, you have the option to use the glass that is on the X1 Carbon, or if you want, you can also cut out a polycarbonate panel. All the parts were printed out in polylite gray ABS on the X1 Carbon. If you don't have a printer capable of printing with ABS, then I would highly recommend using PTG to avoid the parts warping when it's fully enclosed. Aside from printed parts, you'll need M3 brass inserts, five millimeters in width and seven millimeters in depth, an assortment of M3 screws, and six by three millimeter magnets. For the top, because I knew I was going to be having the AMS on here and I didn't want to deal with supporting a polycarbonate panel, I just ordered a spare top glass panel for the X1 Carbon from the Bamboo Lab store for $30. The polycarbonate or acrylic panels in my case for the sides are probably going to be the hardest thing to get. If you have a CO2 laser or something like a CNC machine, then you can cut them out. They do provide the DXF file for all of the different panels. I ended up cutting all the panels out on my Shippo using a 24 by 36 inch sheet of acrylic that I got off of Amazon. I have to give thanks to my buddy Joe Spanier for giving me recommendations on cutting the acrylic. I've always cut out acrylic with a CO2 machine and I was definitely worried about screwing up such a large sheet of acrylic. I ran a small test cut just to make sure everything looked okay and then ran all of the panels in one go. The end result was awesome and I was blown away by the tolerances. All of the six millimeter magnets are just pressed into place. For anyone without access to a laser or CNC machine, there are services out there like Send, Cut, Send, where you can provide the DXF files and the material that you want them cut out of, and they will send them to you. There is definitely a premium going that route, but they do sometimes have discounting available. You can already purchase the printed parts, and I imagine it will only be a matter of time before the panels are sold as a kit somewhere else as well. Assembly is fairly straightforward by following the detailed instructions on the printables page. One word of warning though is with the camera. If you installed the P1P camera, the Bamboo Lab instructions has you routing it on the outside of the frame, which I totally forgot. And when I went to install the top screw of the front left panel, my screw went right through my ribbon cable. Because this printer was in my studio, I wasn't really ever using the camera, so right now I went ahead and moved it, but I will hopefully end up sourcing another ribbon cable from Bamboo Lab, and again, just if you do have this camera installed, you're going to have to shift the cable around a bit, so that way you don't place a screw right through it. I did also print out a cable chain and ABS that was designed for the P1P. This just keeps the tool head cable from rubbing on the top glass and makes it very similar to the X1 Carbon, which I have really liked. Although the X1 Carbon has been and will continue to be my primary machine out of these two that are printing with ABS, ASA, and polycarbonate, I'm definitely excited to have the ability to print with those materials on the P1P as well, especially if I have a large or multiple projects going on at the same time. In general, I don't print with a ton of abrasive filaments, but at $35 for the new full hot end and $20 for the extruder gears, to me it's absolutely worth it to have the capability if I ever want to throw some glow-in-the-dark filament or some carbon-filled filament, which I do have some around here on the P1P. For anyone that doesn't plan on printing with those filaments or abrasives, the stock setup is plenty, but it is really nice to know that there is at least an upgrade path available for those that are interested. And that is the current state of my P1P. I'm super happy with all of the upgrades and I think that this vision enclosure is absolutely awesome. Links to all of the printable files or project files and anything that I used will be in the description down below for anyone that's interested in doing any of these mods or finding out more for yourself. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.